Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be 10 problems with the Fender Stratocaster. And that's a bit strange because if you notice most of the videos on my channel are, are praising the Fender Strat because I am a fan. Um, it's just that I know that a lot of people aren't and I know that probably even more people don't really know which way to go when they're looking for a guitar. Do they, you know, do they go for the Gibson style? Do they go for the Fender style? You know, but I thought this video might come in useful for somebody from somebody that knows about strats to sort of go through the issues that I know a Stratocaster has got. Um, so let's just go from, from the top, from right from the headstock, right the way down to the bridge. So problem number one is the six in the line tuner arrangement. Now, the problem with this is string tension. So if you notice, the top E is the longest, which basically means that that's going to have the most tension, which is not really ideal, really. Now, if you if you have a look at, at a three-a-side Gibson arrangement, the top E comes to about there, like the, the sort of the bottom A on the strap, which is which which will feel looser. Um, you know, and people have said that's why Jimi Hendrix favoured, you know, right-hand Stratocasters, you know, turning them upside down because the tuners, the, the headstock was sort of re reversed as well, and you can get sort of strat style guitars with reverse headstocks you know like the uh, the chapman guitars is a good example so yeah um having the string tension of the top e as the highest tension is not a not really good idea i mean you're not going to be bending the high e the most you're probably going to be bending with the b but that's still a lot longer you know than the the, the bottom e and the the bottom a so yeah that's the first thing you know, probably easier tuning up, but string tension wise, I've never thought that's such a good idea, although it does look nice, of course. Um, number two is the shallow break angle um, of having, you know, the, the sort of the headstock with no with no pitch. Um, you know, like Gibson's come, I think it's something like um, 17, 17 degree angled headstock which which is weaker but you know the strat having no sort of neck angle at all what that does is because the strings don't have a break angle leo fender back in the day solved that problem by having string trees now <laughs> which gives it the break angle but for some reason i don't know why but you know fenders don't include the string tree on the G and the D. Now it's it's really important on that G string because what I've found is, I don't know if you notice, I've got a little bit of thread wrapped around the G there and that's that's to prevent what's called um, sympathetic resonance. So what happens is, if you haven't got much of a break angle over the nut, that string will ring behind the nut, causing a sort of, you know, like, like a harmonic which is really annoying so you cure it by either getting another string tree or deadening the string behind the nut which is what i've done um i, I don't know why fender just don't include two string trees by you know by default but they don't i know that they do on the professional series no sorry not the professional the performer series they do uh another way to, to fix this issue is to have staggered tuners as well which this player strat doesn't come installed with and it also doesn't come installed on vintage style instruments. So I just think there's a design flaw there, which something like a, a Gibson hasn't got because that's that's got the, the break angle of the headstock. So anyway, that's the second thing, the break angle. Number three, neck radius. Now, your typical modern Stratocaster will, will come with a 9.5 inch radius neck so that the, the radius of the neck is the curve of the, the fingerboard um so this is 9.5 which is sort of more of a curve than the the standard 12 inch of a gibson which is flatter why is that a problem because when it comes to bends strings will start to choke out earlier on a 9.5 inch radius neck than a, than a 12 yeah, which is why more often than not you can get the the action lower on the on the Gibson on the Gibson style guitar or any guitar with a twelve inch radius board. 
Um, <coughs> the Player Plus Stratocasters do come with 12 inch, but like I say, as standard, it's either 7, I think it's 7.25 for the vintage instruments or 9.5 for the more modern ones. 12 inch radius for something like um, the, the Player Plus series. So yeah, um, flatter boards equals less string choking. Um, number four, the scale length. So the Fender scale length is longer than on your typical Gibson. Um, it's 25.5 inches. And what that means, there's more tension. Uh, a Gibson I think is 24 and three quarter inch scale length, which is shorter, looser string tension. You can even get some guitars 24 inch. Like, I think the most famous one is, you know, the Brian, Brian May Red Special. That's 24 inch. And if you take into account the higher tension and the higher tension with you know the the arrangement of the tuners you know this is getting to be a lot more of a stiffer feeling instrument altogether than a Gibson or, or something with a different tuner arrangement and a different scale length some people like the you know the the, the tighter action uh, the, the tension some people don't but anyway I'm just pointing out these not necessarily flaws, but just differences between this and the Gibson. So number five, and this is a big one. So Fender Stratocasters and most Fenders, bolt on neck, yeah, versus a glued in neck on something like a Gibson. You know, a lot of players just think, right, <coughs> glued in neck equals more sustain. Um, <coughs> you know, the dupe, the the jury's out on that but like I say a bolt on neck is often seen as a you know the, the, the cheaper option the quicker option and the glued in neck is seen as a sort of a more sort of premium option with more sustain and what have you number six <clears throat> single coil pickups some people just don't like single coil pickups I mean a lot of a lot of people um, they replace these pickups with either noise noise cancelling because these single coils do hum. Um, you know something like a Gibson Les Paul with two humbuckers, there's no hum. <coughs> but it's not just about the hum. Some players just don't like the single coil tone. Some players prefer the prefer the higher output of something like a, like a humbucker or even a P90, which is fatter than a single fatter than a a traditional strat single coil but still has the hum so you know some people just don't like single coil pickle pickups and that's what you more or less get with a stratocaster um also the the bridge pickup on a stratocaster comes under a lot of criticism some people just say that's the ice pick tone it's not really usable clean um yeah some people just don't like that pickle end of number seven <laughs> big one the trem some people just don't like trems um and on a sort of <clears throat> on this configuration of a stratocaster the trem's always been a bit of a compromise by that what i mean is you know if you're gonna dive bomb on this you're gonna get tuning issues unless you spend a hell of a lot of time you know um getting this set up properly um getting all the points lubricated probably the you know the the most famous exponent of a, a stratocaster trem is jeff beck and you know even he's had to go through a, a vast number of modifications to his guitars you know he's got a roller nut he's got lock and tuners <clears throat> he's got I think he's got the block saddles as well which I've got I've got here but yeah sort of stock setup for a Fender Stratocaster is the trem is always going to be a bit of a compromise if you're a heavy trem user if you're a heavy trem user you know there's a Floyd there's the Floyd Rose trem for that um, a lot of players just don't even bother with a trem in the first place so <clears throat> and it does require a lot of maintenance you know you've got You've got all the setup with the, the cavity and the clone and the springs and things like that and it's 
to some players that's just an unnecessary complication that I don't want to deal with they just want to fix bridge so yeah <laughs> the trem is a pretty big thing um, let's just look at the, the sort of the control arrangement as well so you've got the volume and the two tones <clears throat> excuse me for a start the volume tone sorry the volume control a lot of players just don't like the location of that they think it's too close and it's easily sort of knocked. Um, a lot of players don't like the idea of having just the one volume tone. That they prefer the, they prefer two volume control, controls to have. You know, separate rhythm and lead, uh, volumes like you would on a Les Paul, so you can flick between them. You know, the the two tone arrangement is a little bit weird on a Stratocaster. I've always thought, you know, this tone governs. The, the neck pickup and the middle pickup and this one governs the bridge pickup if it's wired correctly which which this is but on a vintage instrument it isn't wired at all but they would they would govern the the bridge pickup and the middle pickup so it's a little bit more confusing than something at gibson which is just one tone and one volume per pickup um <laughs> lots of people would disagree with that you know lots of people would say no that's perfect position for the volume so you can do violin and whatever but there you go a lot of people think this is a problem with the fat with the fender strat uh, so the next thing is the selector switch similarly the position some players just think it gets in the way you know on a gibson as paul it's here which is out the way of your sort of strumming or whatever <laughs> whatever you're doing some people just think that gets in the way. I know somebody, it's less of a problem on a on a Telecaster, but I know somebody who moved the, the Telecaster switch up here, like on a Gibson, which, you know, you had to root out the, the body of the, the guitar to do it. So a lot of players just don't like this, the location of this control arrangement with, with the volume, the tones, and the and the selector switch. Um, Number 10, then. So... This might be a surprising one to some because, you know, one of the the things that the, the Stratocaster was marketed on was how easy it is to upgrade. Um, I'm I'm not so sure that I really agree with that 100 percent because if you want to swap pickups out on this guitar, you're probably going to have to remove all the strings or at least slapping them off, which messes up your trim. You're going to have to take off every single screw around here. You're going to have to take off the scratch plate. You're probably going to have to remove. Well, you might you might get away with not removing the uh, the earth wire. You have to flip this over, and then you'll have to swap out the pickups. Now compare that to a Gibson, where you would just flick the guitar over. It's got its own separate sort of cavity for the pickups. You just unscrew four screws, go straight in. That's it done. Now. I once, well, I had an Epiphone Les Paul Junior a while ago. That was so simple. That was like two two screws, take them out, and they had like a plug-in arrangement to on the pickup. So you literally just took up took out two screws, unplugged the pickup, put another one in, done. But on this, I think pickup changes are quite a bit of a chore on a Fender Stratocaster more more so than on a lot of other guitars now i know that you can just take the neck off easily but how, how often would you do that anyway so that's it really i just wanted to quickly go through you know 10 common problems on on all stratocasters really to vary to varying degrees depending on if it's a vintage instrument or it's a more modern instrument but i hope that's been helpful to somebody that's maybe looking at a Stratocaster and just wants to be aware of you know what am I getting myself into here because as much as I love Stratocasters they they are very fiddly instruments and they, they do require a lot of work to get them functioning how you want but I'm waffling so it must be time for the getting near the end of the video so thanks for watching thanks for liking thanks for subscribing you know I appreciate everybody who watches these videos um 
and looking forward to the next one. See you in a bit. Bye.